you can see we don't really have a whole lot of room here and it's gonna be really tight running an exhaust down into there all right got the old swing press hopefully this thing can move enough so we can get this turbo in here you ever find yourself in the middle of hacking the front of your car off and then think of a better way not to hack the front of your car off Okay, boom, the intercooler is mounted for now-ish. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Russell Mod. Today we are back on the 1976 Buick Skylark. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this build, we are essentially trying to make a budget project car for as cheap as possible. We picked this thing up from the junkyard for 200 bucks. We tried to get the thing running, but it ended up catching on fire. So what we did was we actually bought a Silverado for really cheap. We parted the whole Silverado out, yanked the motor out of the Silverado, rebuilt it, put a cam in it, and tried to build it as cheap as we could do so we could get cheap power for a little money. So in a previous episode, we got the motor from the Silverado in this thing. We got a Turbo 400 bolted to it and now we're trying to boost it for as low cost as possible. So in the last episode, we tried to do some management under the hood, trying to figure out where everything's going to fit because putting a modern LS engine into an old car is not necessarily the most easiest thing. We're trying to figure out wiring harness and we tried to clean this thing up a little bit. In this episode, we're back under the hood trying to figure out how everything is going to fit with our turbo kit. So we got a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. So if you guys missed the last few episodes, I'll link the playlist up here so you can go see all the progress that we made on this thing. There's a lot of stuff that we had to do to get the motor in the chassis and a lot of stuff we had to do the chassis to get the motor to sit right. But we have the motor in the Buick and I'll show you guys kind of where we're at on the swap so you guys can see the progress that we made. All right, so basically the goal for this project is to do it as cheap as possible, but also to try to make this thing a sleeper. So everybody in the comments wanted us to turn the turbos under the hood and make it look like this thing is completely unassuming. And that way, whenever we drive this thing on the street, people have no idea that this grandma ugly Buick is actually turbo LS swap. But just a quick rundown on the setup that we have here. We have a turbo 400 that I got off a of buddy for a hundred bucks. We have an intake that I got off a of buddy for a hundred bucks. Fuel rails from the same guy. We have snake eater performance injectors. We have Amazon turbo headers. We have max peening rod turbos. We have ICT billet complete accessories and we have an eBay radiator. So we're trying to do this thing as cheap as possible. So that's kind of the name of the game for this build, but we're also trying to be as unassuming as possible because we have the most unassuming Buick ever made. This thing is not everybody's favorite, but it's kind of growing on me. So on the table in front of me is kind of all the parts that we're going to be throwing at this thing to try to get it a little bit more complete today. So first off, we have an intercooler. I got this thing, I believe off Amazon, and it would fit the Buick a little bit better than some of the other intercoolers that I've found. This one's set up for a twin turbo setup, so the inlets go on the bottom and the exits on the top. A lot of guys I've seen with Novas actually use this, so I figured if it works on their builds, then it'll probably work on ours. Now, Max Peating Rods actually sent us the entire turbo piping kit. So all the turbo pipes are here. So I'm gonna to try to make this kind of fit under the hood. So that way we can kind of see where everything is going to go. And we can try to weld that up or put our couplers on it and stuff like that. We got some wastegates here from VS Racing. I kind of wanted to get a little bit nicer wastegates because it's kind of a thing you don't really want to cheap out on. So that way you can manage your boost correctly and stuff like that. So I got two wastegates here and we're going to try to fit them. And that is kind of why I got them early. So that way we can see how they fit under the hood with our accessories. I also picked up a steering wheel for this thing because if you guys saw the first episode of this thing, the steering wheel is covered in like glue and you touch it and it literally sticks on your hands for weeks. It's really gross. So I found the cheapest wheel I could find on eBay and snagged that thing. So that way, at least whenever we drive it, it's not gonna be completely disgusting. And we have to backtrack a little bit. So 
Whenever we put the motor in here and we put our Speedlab oil pan on, I completely overlooked having turbo drains in here. So I found this kit and it actually mounts the turbo drains onto the timing cover. And I like that a little bit better because our turbos are kind of forward in the engine bay and they'll drain nicely if we go right to the timing cover instead of going all the way underneath into the oil pan. So I'm going to have to pull off some of the accessories and stuff and slap on this so that way we can make our drain lines and we should be good to go for the turbo setup stuff. Now we are gonna run our feed, but that shouldn't be a problem. We should have plenty of room to do that, but I kind of overlooked putting all the accessories on before I put the turbo drains in. So gonna have to backtrack a little bit and slap this thing on real quick. So that's probably the first thing we're gonna do is put this on. All right, so I'm gonna start by pulling the radiator back out. I gotta pull the water pump back off and some of the ICT billet stuff that gain access to the timing cover, but at least the engine is really accessible and I can probably pop this thing off in a few minutes here. So let me get it cracking and I can pull this stuff off and insert that new one with our turbo drains. So within a few minutes, pulled off all the accessories and the water pump, and we gain access to the timing cover. So all I gotta do is yank the balancer off real quick, pull the timing cover off, and then put the new one on. All right, and just like that, we got our timing cover removed and ready to install the new one. I gotta get a front main seal for it, but we should be ready to go. Now, this is kind of why I say just to mock up everything in the engine bay first when you're doing a project like this. That way, if you think of something later, like adding turbo drains or whatever you have to do, doing stuff now is a lot easier than doing it later. We got our front main seal installed. I put a little bit of silicone on the corner so it doesn't leak, and we can go ahead and throw this thing back on. All right, we're back together, got the new timing cover on. Everything is back to where we started. So now we can try to start mocking up some stuff. And one of my biggest concerns is the wastegates. Now, you can see we don't really have a whole lot of room here. If you're not familiar with what a turbo car does, basically the exhaust pressure comes and spins this turbine in here. And it does the same thing on both sides. It will come together and create pressure in an intercooler and then it'll push air into the intake of the engine now whenever you have too much pressure on the car say you want to run five pounds of boost you can regulate the pressure with a wastegate so this is the wastegate that we're going to be running and we're going to try to be able to fit it in this car so the wastegate should really be mounted kind of on an angle like this now sometimes you just can't be able to get the wastegate to be at a perfect angle like that and that'll cause some issues with boost creep and stuff like that. Now boost creep is where you try to get, say you're trying to make five pounds of boost but it actually makes eight pounds of boost. Now that's because of all the exhaust pressure that you're trying to spin the turbo with, you have to let it exit at some point and that's what the wastegate does. So basically what we'd have to do is you'd have to cut a hole probably right at this angle here and mount our wastegate to it. Now, whenever we command amount of boost, this valve in here will open and it'll let the exhaust pressure out so it won't create any more boost. And it'll happen the same thing on this side. So we're gonna need two wastegates on each side since this is twin turbo. So the problem is, is we have to be able to mount this wastegate somewhere and it's just gonna be really tight. So I'm gonna try to play around with the placement of the turbos to try to get them at the right place so that way everything can fit. Now if you see this one, this still has like this evap canister or something in here. 
gonna remove that and then this one is sitting on the battery tray I'm gonna try to cut that out so that way the turbos are exactly where I want them so that way we can try to fit the wastegates and see how everything is gonna fit with the radiator being right here all right got that thing pulled out but kind of running into an issue with these fender liners now I know a lot of like drag race style builds they just pull these fender liners out I would like to keep fender liners in here because I don't know we might be off-roading this thing or something so I'd like to keep them in and it's gonna be really tight running an exhaust down into there so I'm gonna have to get creative here see what I got to do with these fender liners seeing if I can even run them at all or I might just have to cut them up a lot so we will have to see all right, got the old swing press. Hopefully this thing can move enough so we can get this turbo in here. All right, well, I got it massaged and it's sitting down. It's still up a little bit, but that's pretty much as far down as I can go. Might have to pull the fender liner out or severely cut it, but I don't really wanna do either of those. If I'm gonna cut it up, it's not really gonna be much left, so I might as well just pull it out, so. All right, did some figuring, did some thinking. I'm gonna have to pull the fender liner out, so I'm gonna pull this wheel off, pull that fender liner out, and then we can gauge how much more room I got. We got the fender liner removed over there. Now we can kind of gauge where everything's gonna go. So the turbo is here. That gives us a lot more room. We can run the exhaust back. It's still gonna be tight, but it gives us some room. All right, having a little bit of trouble figuring out where everything's gonna go, but I think I have the best solution. So let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so I clocked the turbo up a little bit. It still is gonna be able to clear the hood fine. So. The reason I clocked it up was because the bottom has to rotate some so it doesn't hit the frame. Now I just kind of pressed on the power steering pulley a little bit so I can see where that's going to sit. And I got my radiator kind of where I want it. So this is kind of where the wastegate has to go. So I have limited space between the power steering pulley, the radiator, and the elbow of the turbo. But it looks like there would fit just barely so i'm probably gonna have to cut a piece of pipe and then weld it to the elbow there and then i could place my wastegate right here and that should work then the inlet of the turbo is down there i'm pretty sure if i can snake an elbow on there i can be able to get it to go through that gap and then into the intercooler this side is a lot more room looks like i should be able to do the same thing here and I should have plenty of clearance. Now the only problem is the electric fans. So I think I'll have plenty of room for the electric fans, but I just, it's gonna be a little bit tight with the wastegate there and there, and being able to fit two electric fans on this thing. But I think that that'll work. So that looks like it's gonna be our best bet. So now I wanna try to get the intercooler mocked up so that way we can get the piping and everything routed. All right, so to get the intercooler in there, I'm going to have to remove this brace that's holding the hood latch. So let me pull that out of the way. And we're gonna have to add something back because I don't want this thing flopping around and potentially opening the hood while we're driving down the road. So we're gonna pull that out, but we're definitely gonna add some structure back to it once we get the intercooler in there. All right, so doing a single turbo definitely would be a little bit easier because we could just run the turbos straight through one side and then out the other. Twin turbos makes this a little tighter, but I still think we can do it. So this is where the hood latch went and that's where the exit for this intercooler is going. So I think what I should do 
is pull the bumper back off because this intercooler can definitely go down a few inches and that will probably give us the clearance that we need. I talked to another guy that actually has the same body style of Buick and he did a single turbo LS on his and it's actually a really, really nice car compared to this one and it's really well done. And what he was saying was he actually pulled the bracing out of the inside of the bumper here to give him a little bit more clearance and to save some weight. So I think that might be something that I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull the bumper off real quick, pull the inside of it out, and then try to gauge where I'm gonna put this intercooler. It's actually probably a lot easier to get to everything once the bumper's off and out of the way. So let me yank this off real quick again, and then see how everything fits with the bumper out of the way. All right, got the bumper off. That thing is really heavy. I see what he's saying. The inside brace of this thing, you can actually remove and it'll probably move the bumper a little bit closer to the body. So it might be something to play with, but we can't go too close because we got to have the intercooler in there. So definitely if we unbolt some of this stuff and at least like cut it out of the way, then that'll make it life a little bit easier and we'll have a lot more clearance. But we could cut this thing and manipulate it all we want. You gotta get the intercooler mounted in here somewhat so that way we can know where to cut and everything like that. So let's try to mock up the intercooler and at least get it mounted somewhat so that way we can see where all the pipes have to go and then we can fit this bumper last. All right, trying to figure out the placement of everything. So if you could see inside the housing for the radiator, there's a really big gap on this side, which is nice because then we can put all the piping through there this side, the radiator is basically pressed against it on here. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is trim all this out so that way I can get the piping through here. And I might have to trim this back a little bit so that way I can get this thing to sit flush. I'll have to see. But for now, I'm going to cut this out and then try to fit it back up. You ever find yourself in the middle of hacking the front of your car off and then think of a better way not to hack the front of your car off? Yeah, that's what I kind of just did. All right, I kind of had this thing figured out how I wanted to look. Then we stepped back and looked at it and figured that that probably wasn't the best way to do it and came up with an even better way to do it. So since the turbos are so tight here, the best way probably to do this is to run them under the core support and cut this section out. So if I have the turbo facing straight down, I can run the pipe straight down and then 90 it right here. And I can do the same thing on that side. That'll leave me room to have the intake pipe to go right through here where the other pipe would have came back and now would go under this core support and then right into there. And looking at where the bumper goes, it looks like it'll still cover the intercooler and it has some holes in it so it'll get airflow and stuff. So I accidentally cut into there and then we had stopped, thought that that probably wasn't a great idea. So probably gonna have to weld that back. But if I trim this out and I trim that out, that will probably be the best way to do it. So I'm gonna roughly just mount this intercooler into place and then figure out how the pipes are gonna run then I'll trim this out and then try to fit the pipes and everything like that. All right, so I'm gonna have to weld this back into place and then remove the intercooler and then cut that out, cut it out on the other side and then make the intercooler mount and then we should be having some progress here.
Gun booth cut out. About time. Okay, boom. The intercooler is mounted for now ish. The just drilled two holes temporarily in the sides to hold it in place. So now you can kind of see what I want to do. So this will go right in here, and then this will shoot right down there. And then this, we're going to have to jog a little bit, go straight down, and then come right out there, boom. And then this can come through here, around, and right in there. That's the game plan. See if we have enough pipe. All right, so I'm just going to run the intercooler pipe straight off like that. Then I got this nice 90 degree, which actually is powder coated, which is pretty sweet. Powder coated black, looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna shoot that back in just like that. I may able even to angle it a little bit. Um, but shoot that back in, something like that. I'll have to trim this, do the same thing on the other side, and then connect it just straight up to the turbo, probably with another 90 elbow or something. We can mark it all in place, see if we're gonna have to weld it. I don't want too many clamps on it, so we'll have to see how it looks. All right, I figured this might be kind of my best bet here. So I'll show you how it's gonna work. I got a 90 elbow down there, and then I got this 45 here that can come right here. I'm gonna have to cut it and then find a 45 coupler or weld a 45 to it and put a straight coupler on it. Not really sure. We'll have to see when I cut it, how much room I got. Same thing over here, 45, cut it, 90 or 45 coupler, or weld it, and then coupler to there. Now I don't have any more 90 boots, so I'm gonna have to get some, but this will come out and go around and then into there. But I gotta put the radiator back in to see how that's gonna look. But first, I'm gonna cut these two pipes and mock them up in the place to see how much room I have to be able to fit everything else. All right, this looks like it's gonna work pretty good. So, looks like I can probably get a 45 or a straight coupler, like straight to there. That should work. This one, probably gonna get a 45 coupler also, but both of them, I need a reducer for to make it this size to this size so that's probably the best i can do with what i got so i wish this kit had a little bit more fittings like a 45 there's no 45s in there so that would have worked really well but for what it is i think it looks pretty good i want to try to fit the radiator in there make sure everything still fits and then see how i'm going to do the intake pipe All right, this thing's looking pretty sweet. So if I shift the radiator all the way over, as far as I can without touching that turbo, that looks like that will work and that will leave me a ton of room to go around in here and then come around and put right into the intake. So I think that's how it's gonna look, guys. The only thing that I gotta be worried about is the front bumper. But like I said, this thing weighs about eight gazillion pounds and we can take this entire thing out and make it a lot lighter and make it fit a lot better. So I think that's the game plan. So I think I can drop this down a little bit once I get a coupler on it, come out of the intercooler here. Then I can run this 90 here and this 45-ish piece to here. And then I can get a reducer 90 to come out right here and then it should be up above all the belts and it should clear the fans and stuff so that looks like it's probably going to be the best room for clearance and that's probably what i'll do all right guys well we got the turbo kit almost done so we got both of them in i'm missing two couplers from the turbos to the intercooler pipe and from the intake, I was kind of looking at it. I got this one cut, it comes around, and it fits really good over here. Um, but I'm going to have to, I was wondering maybe if I go like this, that might be a little bit better and a little bit more direct, but I'm missing a 90 degree 
fitting there. The other thing I don't really like about that is once again, I have to run that wastegate. This really will be up a lot higher. So the wastegate should probably go underneath of it and then go something like that and then still have room in there. But if I get one more 90 there and then the adapter fittings for there and there, and then of course the intake one, it'll pretty much be done. So I probably have some laying around somewhere, but it's late and it's dark to go look for them. So that's about as far on the turbo kit as we're gonna get today but it's really coming along and it's really taking shape. So I can't wait to get this thing all buttoned up. It's getting pretty close. guys a lot of hacking a lot of cutting and we got a turbo boosted buick and it's actually plumbed up and if we turn the key with a few couplers it'll start making some boosts so pretty excited pretty cool that we can do this whole thing with very little budget like this entire turbo kit from max feeding rods is really affordable i'll link it down below if you guys are interested in it even with the couplers and stuff it's pretty much worth it it comes with fuel pumps and regulators and everything it's actually pretty cool so we have a discount code with them. I'll put it right here. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We have a bunch of other projects just like this in the future. So make sure you stick around, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.